Nintendo's back with a brand new hybrid console that's already managed to smash the company's previous first week sales records. The Switch is both a portable handheld and a dockable home console, with unique detachable controllers incorporating the best bits of Nintendo's last few consoles. But do you really need one? I've stopped playing Breath of the Wild for 5 minutes to let you know what I think. You get a lot in the box when you buy a Switch. You get the tablet itself, two Joy-Con controllers, a dock, a USB Type-C power adapter, some rails for attaching the Joy-Con to your wrist, a grip for a more traditional controller experience, and a rather short HDMI cable. The tablet is where the magic happens. It's the brain of the operation with all the Switch's hardware hidden behind the 6.2 inch 720p IPS display. The whole thing is lighter than a Wii U gamepad even with the Joy-Con attached, though it's much slimmer and more pleasant to use. On either side of the tablet are a set of metal rails into which the Joy-Con effortlessly glide. Along the top edge you'll find a recessed power button, volume rocker, fan vent, standard 3.5mm stereo jack and the game card slot. That's right, Nintendo has gone for cartridges this time around. Unfortunately pulling open the game card flap doesn't feel great and I felt like I was going to break it the first time I did it. On the back you'll find two air vents and a flimsy kickstand. The kickstand might be the worst part of the entire construction. It barely stands up and doesn't quite close properly again once you've popped it out. Fortunately, it's designed to be replaceable and it cleverly hides the micro SD card slot too. On the underside of the device, you'll find a USB type C port for charging and docking with a TV and for playing on the big screen. Both the controllers and the tablet are made of the same tactile matte plastic material, which is nice to hold and grippy enough to stop the console from sliding out of your hands while in use. The controllers themselves offer several different ways to play. You can play in handheld mode, like a PS Vita, with a Joy-Con attached either side of the tablet. You can play in TV mode with a tablet docked, or you can play in tabletop mode using the flimsy kickstand. You can even pass one Joy-Con to a friend and use both as separate smaller controllers out of the box. The Joy-Con are perhaps a bit on the small side, but that's to be expected from a portable console. There's quite a jump from the ABXY buttons to the right analog stick, and hitting both triggers while resting on the right analog stick can take some practice. The buttons themselves are satisfyingly clicky, and the analog sticks feel great whichever way you use them. The Joy-Con also include a feature called HD Rumble, which is haptic feedback like you'd find on a new iPhone. It's a logical evolution for vibrating controllers, and it works pretty well. I'm not sure it's quite the revolution Nintendo would have us believe, but maybe the right developer can put it to good use and convince me otherwise. Lastly, the dock is a big hunk of plastic that feels cheap and hollow on the inside. It has no real hardware inside it, it just tells the console to suck up more power and output a higher resolution image. You can charge the Switch without it, just use the included USB charger or similar. The operating system feels speedy like a new piece of hardware should. Gone is the Wii grid layout in favour of a horizontally scrolling interface that's not dissimilar to the PlayStation 4. Unlike Sony and Microsoft, Nintendo doesn't push an online account on you until you try to launch the eShop, probably because the Switch's online elements aren't going to be ready for a while yet. While playing retail games, data is kept on the cartridge, which means there's no need to install anything. You'll still have to download and apply updates, and with only 32GB of internal memory, you'll be needing a micro SD card if you want to download full games from the eShop. Things look great on the native 720p display, with no upscaling and a great contrast the screen delivers a crisp image. The panel is very reflective though which can be a problem in well lit areas or while trying to save battery by turning the brightness down. From what I've seen, performance in handheld mode is excellent, with only a few brief patches of slowdown while playing Breath of the Wild. Playing the game in dark mode results in a console rendering a 900p image, which is upscaled to 1080p. It still looks good, but the image isn't quite as crisp. Performance issues were more noticeable on the TV, with Zelda dipping at seemingly random points that I found hard to replicate. Battery life may hold you back while playing on the go. The best I managed from Zelda was around 3 hours on a single charge, though universal USB charging really helps sweeten this pill. If you do decide to charge from USB, you'll need 5 volts over 2.6 amps to ensure the console can play and charge at the same time. Less power will charge the system slowly, but not fast enough to stop the battery from draining. You can even use USB power banks, I'd recommend one of those 5 volts over 3 amp fast charge USB type C ones of at least 10,000 milliamp hours. Like just about any other first generation console, the Switch has its issues. Many of these are software based, while others are going to require a second hardware revision to fix. To start with, the system was shipped with unfinished software, missing several key features. And I'm not just talking about the lack of online services at this point. The biggest software issue I've encountered is a complete lack of save data management. There's no way to get your save data off the internal memory and onto a micro SD card, and there's no way to back up to the cloud either. This is something that absolutely needs to be fixed when you're shipping your console with a game like Breath of the Wild. Better data management in general is required, like the ability to transfer game data from internal to micro SD storage without having to delete or re-download. There's also no support for Bluetooth audio devices, even though the Switch uses Bluetooth for communicating with its controllers. 
Fingers crossed that's a simple software fix and not a limitation of the hardware. The single biggest hardware issue for me is the dock and how its closed design can actually scratch the plastic screen. If you're going to buy a Switch, you'll absolutely need a screen protector. That said, I've not got any scratches on my Switch a week after getting it, but I've been more careful than I normally would. There are smaller issues too. The speakers are poor and lack clarity. Battery doesn't last quite as long as I'd like. There's no real D-pad. Games are thin on the ground at the moment, and it feels like there's a lot of extra stuff to buy. The Switch really can feel like a money pit. You'll want a case, you'll need a micro SD card, there's the Pro Controller, spare USB chargers, portable batteries, spare docks for second TVs, screen protectors, Amiibo, and more. On top of this, you've got to buy some games. Your $300 reasonably priced games console can become very expensive indeed. So should you buy one? Sure there's room for improvement, the plastic screen is a bizarre choice, the dock is a design mistake, and the software clearly is still in development. But these issues haven't overshadowed the time I've spent with the Switch so far. With the best launch game of any recent generation, and an innovative hybrid approach, there's a lot to love about the Nintendo Switch, even at this early stage in the game. The Switch shows promise, even in its unfinished state. If you can live with unfinished software and a few bad design choices, the Switch and a copy of Breath of the Wild will provide hours of fun. A hardware revision will ultimately fix some of the design complaints, but you could be waiting a while. Now I've got this pesky review out of the way, I can go back to playing some Zelda again. To be in with a chance of winning a Switch and to read our full review, head to makeuseof.com.